Okay guys, finally, this is a tour of my kitchen where, do you wanna know what actually took so long for me to film this? All of my dishes are never clean. So, if you watch my What I Eat in a Week videos, the reason that they have basically ceased or paused so that I could film this. And if you're curious as to how I got this like aesthetic, then feel free to watch my kitchen makeover because I made very few like tiny updates when I first moved in. I will link that down below and let's get into it. So the first cabinet is the main cabinet. This is where the majority of all of my dishes are because no, they're not all in one place. And one thing you will quickly notice is how obsessed with bowls that I am. So the first one, I believe this was an anthropology, but I'm talking like years old. So unfortunately I can't link it, but if I can find something similar, I will put it down below. And unlike my other videos, guys, there's usually one single link that takes you to like a Pinterest board of pretty much everything that I own. But in this video, everything's gonna be in the description box in the order that I'm showing them to you. And next up is this little like cheese board. Yes, it's not actually a cutting board, but like what really is the difference? <laughs> And also from the same place is where I got this wood bowl. And I use it almost exclusively for like smoothie bowls because it is so deep. Like you can't tell just from looking at it, but it holds a lot. And also excuse the appearance of any of my wood products because I didn't really get a chance to oil and condition them. So they look kind of ashy. Which brings me to this little espresso cup. And as you guys know, I don't really drink coffee much, which is why this is actually full of clips. So I try to utilize my space as efficiently as possible and not have to find like an entirely different home for this. So I don't use this cup often this works and those clips go to some jars that I'll show you later. I have these little prep bowls which I usually mix spices and you know very small quantities of things. These I stole from my mom. Well I didn't really steal them. I asked her for them. After enough nagging she eventually gave them up and I believe she found these at Ross. And those little clips go to these jars. I use them for everything. They're in my pantry. I use them for leftovers and I also use them for like little scraps. If you see my what I eat in a week videos you already know. And next to that is this like conical shaped drinking glass. It's actually pretty small. I think it's only about 12 ounces. And I'm really sad because I broke the pair the day before I filmed this. They have this like slight green tint to them. And if you were to look at it up close, it has a lot of bubbles in the glass. And moving up to the second shelf, another one of my favorite glasses. What makes the look of these so intriguing is the shape. So you can see the top of it actually comes in and then shoots straight up just like a beer can. This is the largest of my drinking glasses. So I use these a lot. But the first glass set that I actually bought were these and they're only about 11 ounces, I believe. So that's why I eventually started buying more. But these are gorgeous. They actually have um, some lettering etched into that medallion in the middle. Really cute for like coffee drinks and stuff. Strong cafe vibes, which is my whole kitchen aesthetic. Next up are some more prep bowls, but I've had them for a while now and I've cracked them several times. So unfortunately, they're probably gonna be making their way out soon. And behind that, I also have another simple glass. And I also had a 19 ounce and again, I literally broke that. I was on a spray, clearly. But luckily, these are pretty inexpensive, so I will be replacing that soon. And from the same place is this double wall glass mug. But again, this is one of the glasses that I bought years ago, so it's really old and it's no longer in stock. And then stacked into one of my other mugs, I have this tumbler, which is from uh, Urban. And they also make it in a mint color. I think this one is actually sold out. And then what is by far my most used mug is this one because it holds a lot. I think this is at least 16 ounces, if not more than that. Very simple. And despite the way it looks, it's actually not perfectly round. So it just has that breastic quality that I like. And then again, from the same store is this pink mug. And it's similar to that green tinted glass on the bottom shelf because it's got that conical shape that tapers um, at the top and is wider at the base. This is really tiny though, so it only holds a cup or, you know, eight ounces. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but this plate is actually pink, believe it or not. You will notice that a lot of my kitchenware is from either Crate and Barrel or the sister company because it's just pretty affordable. Since I have an obvious love affair with like wood and bamboo, I have this glass pitcher full of some more accessories, including this tea strainer. And if you're anything like me, you probably really appreciate the way that this looks. But honestly, it's probably not that practical because when I started cleaning it, it actually started fraying a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera. I also have some bamboo chopsticks and then this scoop that I found from a local um, boutique. And moving on. Finally, on our last shelf, I have all of my little wood spoons in one of my upcycled jars. Remember, feel free to buy a product that just looks nice because you appreciate the packaging. Because you can keep that jar. I mean, you paid for it. Sustainability and decor. Can't beat that. 
And these are from various places, so everything will be linked down below. But if you guys follow me on Instagram, then you probably saw me mention in my stories recently where I got the bamboo spoons from. Despite the size of these, I mean, these are actually great and I literally don't need full size tongs for anything. This is actually a cheese knife. But again, this was like a little boutique find. It was on sale, so I just bought it because like, why not? Moving on, we have more speckled because again, I just love artisan pieces that have a handmade look to them. And to be honest, some of my dishes are a lot more basic than I would like them to be. But when you wanna have a smaller collection, it just works because then your food doesn't look out of place, if that makes sense. You guys know me in plating, I eat with my eyes. And then this little oddly shaped bowl is, I believe, from Target. And as you guys will notice, I really like a shallow bowl moment. Like I am not a plate person. And if I didn't have that single plate that I do have, I'd be okay with that. And then for this last bowl, again, from CB2, love just like the plate, it's heavy and you can really feel that it's made of clay. In fact, I think it's made from terracotta and that's it for this cabinet. So moving on to the left of that, this is where I keep mostly baking and additional accessories. So I have quite a few enamel trays, including this um, like classic white with the blue trim. And inside of that is everyone's favorite little bread plate, another really old purchase. And since it sold out, I haven't been able to find it anywhere else. But again, I'm gonna try to find some dupes. Then next to that, another enamel piece that I absolutely love. And you guys probably can't tell on screen, but this actually has texture to it. So it's not all like one smooth surface. They drop in the blue color. And so it creates kind of like a bumpy texture and more enamel. So I have the colander with that white and blue trim colorway. And then this tray is actually what they call a pasta dish. So these are great as serveware too if you have a dinner table. And if I tilt the camera just a little bit, you'll notice that I also have some dishes kind of tucked away on the sides. So I have an enamel tumbler, again, in the white and blue. This is excellent for milkshakes or smoothies because it'll keep your drink nice and cold. And in keeping with my blue theme, because clearly I'm a fan, I also have another little espresso mug. And sorry guys, this is another one of those sold out items. And because I make so many of my drinks at home, I really never thought to purchase like a to-go container. But this was actually gifted to me like last year. It's by Fellow. They reached out to me, I think, because I used their kettle. And then on the other corner, I have my straws. And though I prefer the glass straws because you can see that they're clean, I also have these metal ones for boba. So they have like that little slant at the bottom. And I suppose you can use them for smoothies too, especially if you like a really wide straw. For the top, I also have, again, more enamelware. I'm like literally obsessed with these. This brand in particular, such good quality. So I also have the bowls as well. And I actually wanted to get more like colors, but they've literally sold out. And for my last baking tray, I have this really old one. I think it was from like H&M. And then inside of that, I also have tucked away this white bowl, which is great for Asian inspired dishes because it has the little chopstick rest at the top. And then again, another shallow plate. This one is from Muji. I just love wood. Tucked away in the little corner, I have some milk jugs, and I'll use these for basically making like nut milks, or if I'm making a really large juice, then I will use these as well because they're 32 ounces. I just keep in mind the tops are a pop on silicone so it doesn't screw, therefore, it is possible for it to leak. And then lastly, I have this coconut shell bowl. So again, really cute for smoothie bowls, but just much smaller than the one that I normally use. So great for smaller portions. And then lastly, I have these two um, Ikea inserts. These just hold extra little accessories. So I have strainers, spatulas, spoons, my whisks, and more wood accessories that desperately need to be oiled. And then the last bin is mostly accessories for my juicer, which I will show you in a little bit, as well as a popsicle mold because I love making my own like fudge sickles which surprisingly I haven't showed you guys in the video yet. But if you want to see that, leave an ice cream emoji in the comment section. The next cabinet to the left is actually my pantry. And you can see this is how I utilize all of my different sized uh, jars. But that's for another video. Beneath that cabinet is one of my main drawers. So while we're here, I'm going to go there first. So this is going to be things that I reach for the most apart from cutlery. And I've divided them into sections with these little inserts. Also from Ikea. Because since my kitchen is smaller, the drawer is very narrow. So I actually can't even fit like a lot of standard size things in here. First up is my like brass measuring spoon. These are from Amazon, as is everyone's favorite tiny whisk, Goldie. And I also have these like bulldog clips, um, which I use predominantly in my freezer, believe it or not. But you can also use them for like chips, snacks, the works. And then obviously I gotta have the matching measuring cups to go with the spoons. And then the last section has a handle, which goes to my cookware. I will show that later. My vegetable peeler, more handles that goes with my cookware, and um, this like random spoon that I also, again, took from my mother, which she willingly gave up without any persuasion this time. 
But then moving on to the left side of my stove are all of my utensils and additional accessories. So the first thing I want to acknowledge is the insert because it has a nice slim design and really helps you save on space. So highly recommend this. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's actually sectioned off for knives, forks, and spoons. However, I wanna see all of my like items together. So I have ignored those icons and put my sets in by color. So I have one set of gold utensils and for over a year, this was all I had. I didn't use anything else. I also have these stirs, which are great for, again, if you like to make like little cocktails or drinks, even a coffee, if you wanna make like a little latte, if you have like flavored syrups and you wanna mix that through. You guys know I love like a little ice drink, so I have that. And then I have this random clip on from Target, which is great if you buy like bags of coffee or tea, because then you can seal it up a set of silver measuring spoons and then also another random coffee or tea scoop this one i think is from ikea and if you know my obsession with tortoise then that is why i could not pass up on this set when i saw it i do wish that it was actually like a shiny nickel rather than brushed but hey it's still cute then over here on the side i have a knife sharpener and then i have a electric whisk again you know the cafe vibes these are a must for frothing like oat milk or whatever milk you enjoy as well as mixing matcha if you don't have like the traditional whisk while that is probably ideal it just makes sense for me to have one thing that works for everything and here's a tip i always mismatch the batteries when it's not in use you will never have to buy batteries again so just remember keep one askew and they'll last you a really long time and I also love that this comes with like a little silicone base so you can stand it up and like leave it on your counter if you want to. And right next to that is the um, can opener that I was telling you guys about in the second food scraps video. I love that it takes the tops off cleanly and doesn't create any like jagged edges. And for anyone who's really confused and wondering why I have a stapler in my kitchen drawer, this is actually a wine bottle opener. So if you open it up, it has the little corkscrew and then this metal piece on the side here is what gives it leverage against the uh, bottle when you're going to pull the cork out. And another handy little accessory is this little blade on top. So cute, right? The next drawer below again has those IKEA inserts and this is where I keep the lids to my jars that aren't currently in use or extras as well as the accessories for my food processor which I will show you guys later. I'm sorry to keep saying that but it's going to be very soon. So the last drawer contains my hand blender and the accessories. So the reason that I decided to go for this specifically is because with so many different attachments I thought it would be beneficial for saving space. You can either use the standard hand blender, you can also use the whisk, potato masher which you wouldn't think is like that necessary but let me tell you this actually works amazing but that's not it because if i go to the top of my microwave this is where i keep the rest of my accessories including the small chopper good for small jobs but then i also have a full-size food processor which fits one and a half liters that's 50 plus ounces and this is where those additional attachments come in handy because then you can feed in your vegetables to be sliced and grated so instead of having a big bulky base that takes up counter space all i have to do is put my hand blender on the top of it so absolutely love this and then for the last of the items above the microwave as well is this acrylic carton. I mostly use it for like juices, but you can also just use it as a water bottle. And the top of this actually completely screws off, which I don't know why I didn't show you that. So despite the look of it, you do have more access than just this little hole at the top. Therefore cleaning it is pretty simple. Finally, for the last of my bowls, I have this really large bowl from Zara, which is great for like salad, again, made from terracotta, so it is heavy though, but I appreciate the size. Then these last two really textured bowls, which look nice on camera, but are honestly so beautiful in person. Again, they're really old, so I'm pretty sure they're probably out of stock by now. So moving on to the countertops is this cutting board, which love the size, but does take up a lot of space. So that's why I like tend to use that cheese board a little bit more often when I need to retain more of my counter space while I'm cooking. This little pepper mill, which I really prefer when they put the mechanism on the top because then you don't get stuff on your counter. So to be honest, I might replace this. Not right away, but eventually. 
And the reason that I decided to go with this kettle when I purchased it specifically, because you can just buy it without the heating mechanism to put directly on your stove, is because, as you guys know, I love tea, which means that it's better to have control of the temperature settings because you don't need boiling water for every type of tea because some leaves are more sensitive than others. So what's great about this is it also has a hold setting in case you know that you're definitely going in for seconds. And you can also change the settings from Fahrenheit to Celsius. And in case this isn't your aesthetic, it actually comes in a lot more colors. I also more recently picked up this container from Zara to keep like tall pasta in. Well, right now it's empty, but you guys probably saw me use it in some of my more recent cooking videos. It's kind of pricey, but I really do enjoy the quality of this. I like that it comes with this type of wood because it's one of my favorites. Also recently picked up this salt cellar because it's more convenient for me to have it on my counter when I'm cooking. So that's over there with my oils and those are nothing special. I just take the labels off of the bottles that I buy. And then if I want, I can refill it at my local market. This is the little station I'll just kind of change out periodically depending on how I'm feeling. So either there'll be some fruit there that needs to ripen or I'll make like a little tea station of the teas that I am enjoying currently so that they're easy to access. I'm sure you are all quite familiar with this pan. At the time that it launched, Instagram would not stop showing me these ads. So I caved, I bought it, and I am thinking about actually doing a review for it for you guys. And then on the other side of the stove is where I keep this little bin for like potatoes and onions. Garlic, I usually keep in the refrigerator. If I plan on using it a lot that week, I'll just put it in this little container so easier access. And thankfully I have a lot of storage in this kitchen. So the console around my refrigerator is where I keep the rest of my appliances. So here I have my juicer, my blender, and my salad spinner. And I've gotten a lot of questions about my juicer. So I'm gonna give you guys more of like an in-depth view here. The specific model, again, will be linked down below. And the reason that I went for this one is because it's so easy to put together and use because it has these red dots that just match up all of the drums. Number one, I love emaciating juicer. So I feel like if you want the most for your money you need to go with a slow all grill juicer and what that means is that it's going to crush the fruits and vegetables that you put inside ultimately squeezing the juice out of them which is the equivalent to a cold press juice so it's the opposite of a high speed blender that just has a metal plate with teeth that spins really really fast and if you're concerned about food waste don't worry because i have two videos with tons of recipes on how to utilize your pulp you don't have to throw it away you can enjoy your juice and utilize the whole food Another thing I like about this juicer specifically is it does come with a lot of accessories. So going back to the ones that I showed you in the bin earlier, it comes with this green brush so that you can clean this drum that strains your juice. If that weren't enough, it also comes with a single-handed brush. You can easily remove the stopper so that makes cleaning easy. And it comes with an additional brush so that you can really get into all of the nooks and crannies, including something you've never seen me use, but it even comes with an attachment for making sorbet. My blender is so efficient that that's why I don't use this. So if you guys wanna see like how that turns out, um, again, put that ice cream emoji and I'll put it in with the popsicles. Then lastly, of course, it comes with the containers that hold your juice and your pulp, as well as that little mesh strainer. So this fits right over the pitcher and it even has space along the top here so that it doesn't obstruct your juice when you're trying to pour it out. And then the last for my electronics is my holy grail, my Vitamix. Besides the performance, what I love about these blenders are the details. When it comes to like making these type of investments, it's the small things that matter. The fact that the cord fits entirely below the machine, very useful. The lid is also a one ounce measuring cup. And the one thing that sets Vitamix apart from a lot of other blenders, I think is the plunger. But again, those things aside, honestly, it's just the strongest blender. You can not only get things really smooth, you can also make your own nut butters, flowers, even cook soup. I had one gifted to me when I was raw, and when you're not cooking any of your food, texture becomes super important. So that's when I fell in love with it, and I haven't turned back since. This is my salad spinner, and as I said before, what I like about this is it works like this. So instead of having the pump mechanism on top, it is built into the base. And what I appreciate about this design is that that spring-loaded mechanism is protected by the colander. So that means when you're spinning like shredded lettuce and other stuff, it doesn't actually get stuck in there. And that's the problem that I had with other salad spinners. So with this, it's not a problem. Below the previous cabinet is actually where I store um, a lot of my apothecary items. Items. So that's just a little sneak peek. I'll give you guys a better look when we go through my entire apartment. So all that's left is my pans, which you guys know I purchased recently. They were pretty much a Christmas gift to myself. One, as you can see, very space saving. They stack into one another, which is something that like regular pans just don't do, at least not in a way that would take up this little space. 
and you actually have two options for handles so you can either go for the standard or you can go for the side clamps and that makes it easier if you're using especially like a larger pan which is holding like a lot of heavy food they also come with a lid which you can use the handles on as well and in addition to cooking once you've made a meal you can actually store your food in the refrigerator in these pots with this lid system so yeah I'm still happy with my purchase and then of course having more than one pan is really going to come in handy when I'm no longer just cooking for myself and the final piece is my coffee press so this I use for tea besides my water bottles that is everything that's in my kitchen again if you guys want to see that pantry video make sure that you don't forget to subscribe and if you like this video please do give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one